Hi, this is Mary Beth Cox, Epidemiologist with the Injury and Violence Prevention Branch. This slide set was created to provide a basic overview of data trends and public health surveillance around the drug overdose epidemic. Historically, these slides have been shared and used as a way to provide a state-level background to the drug overdose issue. If you'd like a copy of the slides, please email me at marybeth.cox at dhhs.nc.gov. This recording is meant not only to provide an orientation to the overdose epidemic surveillance, but our hope is that this video will also serve as guidance for ways to convey this information in your own presentation. Before we begin, there are just a few technical notes to point out. The majority of the fatality data presented here come from the vital registry system of the North Carolina State Center for Health Statistics. We have historically used these data the ICD-10 codes from death certificates to track and monitor the drug overdose burden in North Carolina. We acknowledge that there are some challenges with the ICD-10 coding system and therefore want to remind everyone that the definitive source of death data comes from the North Carolina Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, or OCME. OCME also has the most recent data and data on deaths involving specific drug types. The 2016 mortality data used in this presentation was closed and made final in September of 2017. Finally, there was a tr transition in the hospital and emergency department coding structure in October of 2015. And as those systems moved from ICD-9 to ICD-10-CM, there are now different definitions for injury, including poisoning hospitalizations and poisoning ED visits. This unfortunately means that data occurring after the transition cannot be compared to data occurring before the transition. And because the transition occurred three quarters of the way through 2015, we, as well as others across the country, are still trying to figure out the best way to use 2015 data. This core set of slides provides an overview of statewide medication and drug overdose deaths, opioid related overdoses, and some information on our state's response coordination. We do post multiple county level data tables on our injury and violence prevention branch poisoning data website and can provide a county level slide set upon request. This presentation is not intended to cover all data related to the overdose epidemic, but rather to give an overview of some of the key trends. To start, we'll discuss medication and drug overdose deaths across the state of North Carolina. Medication and drug overdose deaths consist of a broad category of drugs, including prescription, controlled, over-the-counter, and illicit substances. Here are nearly 50 years of data for two specific types of injuries. For the past century, motor vehicle deaths have been the leading cause of injury death in North Carolina and the United States. In North Carolina, drug overdoses from all intents overtook motor vehicle crashes in 2010 to become the leading cause of injury death. A combination of factors help explain both the rise in overdose and the decline in motor vehicle deaths. The systematic effort to make driving a safer experience, think of speed limits, seat belts, and other car safety features, resulted in the decreased number of motor vehicle traffic deaths. The addition of pain as the fifth vital sign in 1989 is often pointed to as one of the major factors contributing to the increase in overdose deaths. These two lines tell a powerful story of public health and society at large's ability to address a significant health issue over time. But we need to act as we did with motor vehicles in order to turn the tide for drug overdose. In North Carolina, as in the United States as a whole, deaths due to medication and drug overdoses have been steadily increasing since 1999. And the vast majority, approximately 88% of these are unintentional deaths. In 2016, there were 1,965 medication and drug overdose deaths, and over 1,700 of those deaths were unintentional. While the number of self-inflicted deaths have remained relatively stable, less than 200 a year, unintentional drug overdoses have continued to rise. Again, these numbers include deaths from all types of medication and drugs, but opioids have, been, have contributed to the majority of these deaths. This map shades the counties of North Carolina based on their respective unintentional overdose death rates. To provide greater re reliability and county level rate estimates, death counts for the five, uh, five year period were used. In counties with deaths less than five, rates were not calculated. 
The counties with STARS had fewer than 10 deaths, so those counties' overdose rates should be interpreted with caution. The darker the shading, the higher the rate of unintentional medication and drug overdose during this time period. The overall statewide rate of unintentional medication and drug overdose deaths from 2012 to 2016 was 12.2 per 100,000 persons. The epidemic of unintentional medication and drug overdose has mostly been driven by opioids, specifically prescription opioids. Historically, prescription opioids, represented by that top green line, have contributed to an increasing number of medication and drug overdose deaths. More recently, heroin and other synthetic narcotics like fentanyl and fentanyl analogs are resulting in increased deaths. The number of deaths involving cocaine are also on the rise. It's important to note that these counts are not mutually exclusive. If a death involves multiple drugs, it will be counted on multiple lines. So please do not add the numbers together as you would likely be double counting some people. The next series of slides will focus on a subcategory of medication and drug overdose deaths, that of opioid related overdoses. In June 2017, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services released North Carolina's Opioid Action Plan. The plan was developed with community partners to combat the opioid crisis. It is a living document that will be updated as we make progress on the epidemic and are faced with new issues and solutions. Strategies in the plan include coordinating the state's infrastructure to tackle the opioid crisis, reducing the oversupply of prescription opioids, reducing the diversion of prescription drugs and the flow of illicit drugs, increasing community awareness and prevention, making naloxone widely available, expanding treatment and recovery systems of care, and measuring the effectiveness of these strategies based on results. This slide lists the data metrics being tracked as part of the action plan. These metrics are updated quarterly. For more information on the plan and the data metrics, visit www.ncdhhs.gov slash opioids. The opioid sales data depicted in this slide comes from DEA ARCOS, the Automation of Reports and Consolidated Orders System, which is an automated comprehensive drug reporting system which monitors the flow of DEA controlled substances from their point of manu manufacture through commercial distribution channels to the point of sale or distribution at the dispensing or retail level. Think of hospitals, retail pharmacies, practitioners, mid-level practitioners, and teaching institutions. The rising rate of prescription opioid analgesic sales in North Carolina mirrors the rise in deaths from prescription opioids. This same parallel is occurring nationally as well. Like the medication and drug map shown earlier, this map shades the counties of North Carolina based on their respective unintentional opioid overdose death rate. The statewide rate of unintentional opioid related overdose deaths from 2012 to 2016 was 9.2 per 100,000 persons. Again, these deaths are a subset of the overall drug and medication overdose deaths. This map shows 2016 data from the North Carolina Controlled Substances Reporting System, or the CSRS, on number of outpatient opioid pills dispensed. Darker counties had higher rates of outpatient opioid dispensing. The rates of opioid pills dispensed are per individual resident. The overall statewide rate for 2016 was 66.5 pills per resident. Previous analyses in North Carolina have shown that prescription opioid overdose deaths are more common in counties where more opioids are dispensed. This graph depicts the increase in unintentional opioid deaths in North Carolina. Unintentional opioid deaths have increased from just over 100 deaths in 1999 to almost 1,400 deaths in 2016. These numbers include deaths from both prescription and illicit opioids. This slide also shows the changing landscape of the opioid epidemic. The green portion on the bottom of this graph shows the number of opioid deaths due to commonly prescribed opioids. The dark blue portion on top shows the number of opioid deaths due to illicit opioids like heroin and other synthetic narcotics, which includes things like fentanyl and its analogs. The light blue middle portion of the graph are deaths due to both prescription and illicit opioids. There are a few caveats when categorizing the data this way. The main one being that there's no specific code used on death certificates to indicate the involvement of fentanyl. Instead, deaths involving fentanyl get coded with an other synthetic narcotic code. 
This code can be used to include other drugs that may not actually fall into an illicit category. However, because of the majority of the deaths receiving the other synthetic narcotic code involved illicitly manufactured fentanyl, we feel comfortable categorizing opioid-related deaths this way to help illustrate the changes in substances contributing to opioid-related overdose deaths. As you can see, deaths due to prescription opioids seem to be leveling off, while deaths due to illicit opioids are continuing to increase and are accounting for a larger proportion of total opioid deaths. The same point of the changing landscape of opioid overdose deaths is illustrated with data from the Office of the Chief Medical Examiners, or OCME. A larger proportion of deaths investigated by OCME are testing positive for heroin, fentanyl, and fentanyl analogs. In 2010, these substances only appeared in 17.5% of opioid overdoses, and preliminary data shows that in quarter two of 2017, almost 80% of opioid overdoses investigated by OCME tested positive for fentanyl, heroin, and or a fentanyl analog. The concept of the injury pyramid, or in this case, the overdose pyramid, is that deaths are only the smallest tip of a much larger burden on the healthcare system and society. In 2016 in North Carolina, for every one opioid overdose death, there were just under two hospitalizations and nearly three ED visits due to opioid overdose. The National Survey on Drug Use and Health estimates that over 395,000 people in North Carolina misused prescription pain relievers in the last year, while the Controlled Substance Reporting System shows that over 8 million prescriptions for opioids were dispensed. So for every opioid overdose death in North Carolina, there were an estimated 260 residents misusing prescription pain relievers and 5,545 opioid prescriptions dispensed for every one opioid overdose death in our state. Emergency department or ED visits for opioid overdoses are also increasing, as are the number of times EMS administered naloxone. The blue portion of the opioid overdose ED visit bars show the proportion of heroin overdose ED visits, which have been on the rise. Though naloxone administration alone by EMS does not necessarily equate to an opioid overdose, it's worth noting that the use of naloxone by EMS has increased dramatically during this time. We're often asked about neonatal abstinence syndrome or NAS. There's not a specific code and hospitalization data for NAS as it's a constellation of tests and provider determinations. And NAS is not currently a reportable condition in North Carolina. Instead, this slide shows both the number of hospitalizations due to drug withdrawal in newborns, as well as the rate of hospitalizations per 1,000 live births in North Carolina. Drug withdrawal in newborn syndrome occurs when the fetus is exposed to certain drugs in the womb and then experiences withdrawal when the supply of drugs is severed following birth. Drug withdrawal in newborns is often, but not always, due to maternal use of opioids during pregnancy, but drugs other than opioids can result in withdrawal in newborns. It's also important to note that some babies are exposed to opioids in the womb because the mother is on medication-assisted treatment, or MAT, and they are under the direct medical care of a qualified provider following best clinical practices. Here we have 2017 year-to-date opioid diagnosis emergency department visits month to month compared to the number of visits in each month in 2016. This opioid diagnosis is a broad definition that includes commonly prescribed opiates, heroin, and other synthetic opiates. We can see that our month-by-month -month totals for 2017, except for March, are much higher than what we were seeing in 2016. Using the 2017 year-to-date data, 247 individuals were seen repeatedly at the ED for an overdose. Some were seen up to five times. We do believe this total may be an underestimate since we're only able to capture repeat visits at the same facility. If an individual is seen at different hospitals, we currently aren't able to connect those visits to the same individual. Overdose events aren't the only impact of the drug epidemic. Hepatitis C, a bloodborne infection, is most often spread by sharing injection supplies, and new hepatitis C infections increased more than 900% over the last 10 years. The biggest increases in acute hepatitis C are in the same regions and the same demographic groups with the highest rates of overdose deaths.
Heart valve and bloodstream infections associated with injection drug use have also been increasing since 2010. Here's data from the North Carolina Youth Risk Behavior Survey, or the YRBS. The YRBS is a representative sample of high school students in North Carolina that happens every other year. Of those high school students surveyed in 2013 and 2015, over 17% reported using prescription drugs for non-medical purposes. This category includes all prescription drugs, not just opioids. It's also important to remember that self-reported survey data often gives an underestimate of drug use. The next series of slides will briefly touch on just some of the work happening across North Carolina in response to the overdose epidemic. People who are at risk of experiencing opioid-related overdose or a family member or friend of such a person can request naloxone, the opioid overdose reversal drug, at a pharmacy dispensing under the North Carolina State Health Director's standing order. Naloxone is available by standing order from over 1,400 pharmacies in North Carolina which accounts for 69% of retail pharmacies in the state. Over 30 health departments in North Carolina have adopted a local standing order for naloxone. You can visit www.naloxonesaves.org to find naloxone near you. More residents of North Carolina are receiving treatment services for heroin than ever before. In 2015, 4,847 persons served at LME MCOs reported the primary drug at the time of admission as heroin, almost twice as many as in 2005. North Carolina has one of the largest community naloxone distribution networks in the entire country, thanks to the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition. Since August of 2013, they've distributed over 60,000 naloxone kits across the state. This map shows the number of reversals reported to the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition by county. Darker shaded counties mean more reversals have been reported. Over 1,000 reversals apiece have been reported from Buncombe, Guilford, and New Hanover counties. The North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition also collects data on naloxone reversals performed by law enforcement agencies. Since 2015, 777 reversals by law enforcement have been reported. There may be additional reversals that weren't reported to the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition, but without a centralized statewide system, it's difficult to get the complete picture. In July of 2016, syringe exchanges were legalized in North Carolina. This map shows counties served by a syringe exchange, or SEP, at the end of the year one annual reporting period. There were 22 registered exchanges serving 28 counties across the state. Individuals from an additional 24 counties and from out of state visited one of the 22 exchanges during year one. Those additional counties served are depicted with blue stripes in the map. Additional exchanges have continued to come on board, and as of the time of this recording in December of 2017, there are 26 active exchanges serving 32 counties across the state. Another initiative in North Carolina is the HIDA, or High Intensity Drug Trafficking Areas Heroin Response Strategy. This is a 20-state initiative managed by eight HIDA regions. North Carolina is part of the Atlanta Carolinas region. North Carolina is one of 20 states that receives funding by the Office of National Drug Control and Policy to support a public health and public safety partnership in addressing the opioid epidemic. The HIDA program also supports 15 counties in North Carolina to investigate and tackle drug trafficking and production in our state. These counties are split between four different initiatives, the Triangle, Triad, Piedmont, and Asheville initiatives. Each initiative has representative officers from counties within their initiative that are based in a central investigative office to work collaboratively on drug trafficking cases. Thank you for your time and attention during this presentation. I hope it was helpful to you and to your work. Should you like a copy of these slides or slides specific to your county or you have any questions about the data presented here, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you again.